Rav, welcome to Everyday Investor, the show that helps you grow your money. We all take our time, we go to work, we make money so we could provide. Let me say that again. We take our precious time, we go to work, which is a good thing and we're blessed to have uh, uh, jobs if we have them. Uh, we make money in order so that we can provide, we can eat. But imagine a world where money could make you money so you could work a little less, have more time for the things that matter most. Faith, family, friends, uh, a purpose that's greater than yourself. That's what Everyday Investor TV show is all about. Remember, whenever we're faced with any investment opportunity, we always ask four questions to start. Number one, what is the return on my investment? Two, when do I get that return? Three, what is the minimum amount needed? And four, what is the risk, the worst case scenario? I love uh, talking to dear, dear friends and uh, always just picking their brain um, and examining their hearts when it comes to investing and giving back. There's no one I'd rather be talking to than Carmen Caponero, such a dear friend. This is gonna be a great show. We're gonna learn how we can make money by borrowing money. No, I didn't say that wrong. We're going to make money by borrowing money and Carmen is the one that's gonna teach us. Don't go anywhere, Everyday Investor continues in a moment. Hey, it's Rav, welcome back to Everyday Investor. As said earlier, we're gonna learn how we can make money borrowing money and Carmen Caponero from ProFunds is going to teach us. She is a superstar, everything uh, finance. Carmen, thanks so much uh, for being on with me today. Well, thank you for having me. I haven't been on your show yet this way, so it's quite interesting. Yes, well, we're pivoting, right? Here we are in uh, uh, coming into November, and um, it's been a very interesting year, and uh, you got to do what you got to do. I know you've been uh, working hard. There's been a lot of changes in the industry, um, and, uh, you know, it can really run us down. We need, I know you need, I need to get on a plane and be able to get some sunshine down south and you know, be able to have lo lots of parties and, but we just can't do that right now. And so uh, we've got to do what we can do. And, uh, but thank you for taking the time and because I know you're really busy, but tell me a little bit, Carmen, about kind of what's going on in the industry, um, even more specifically mortgages, syndicate mortgages. I know there's been a lot of uh, talk in and around that the last year or so. Well, I, I want to go back just a little bit. So people that don't know about us understand what I'm talking about. Um, so ProFunds, we were established, we've been established for over 25 years. We're a mortgage brokerage, but we cater to real estate investors and we finance land, construction, development, rental properties, refinance your own properties. And then we got heavily involved in the private money world. And meaning that we had so many investors we've been working with and we paired investors up with borrowers and um, they were borrowing money and lending money and then we grew it even further where we got involved in lending into development projects we launched a development company that type of thing and so what happened is we we got heavily involved in the syndicated mortgage space which is now a very bad word in the industry and only bad for those that got involved with people that did not have ethics in our industry or so, so explain that for a second what is that what does syndicate even mean? Can you explain what okay. that is? Yeah, so a syndicated mortgage is when two or more people participate in one mortgage. So, um, so what was happening, and it was great. People loved it, and they made such great returns with us. We were paying 7% interest and a, and a deferred 7% lender fee, so total 14% a year. Um, on average, it went up to 14, 15, 16, and it was cash flow for a lot of people. People loved it, and it was going great. And then there were a couple of companies out there that took advantage of people, unfortunately, and abused the whole process. And so basically, um, many people lost money with these other companies, and then the regulators had to come down heavy and hard, which I totally agree with because it got out of control. Um, and so, so what's happening now is, so there's something called a qualified mortgage and a non-qualified mortgage based on the regulator's definition. Okay, so a qualified mortgage would be a single family home, duplex, triplex, up to five units. Okay non-qualified based on the regulators uh, definition is land construction development multi-residential commercial okay so 
what they're doing is, or what they said is anything that's a non-qualified mortgage, um, we can no longer syndicate it. It's now going to be rolling into another regulator, Ontario Securities Commission, which you're quite familiar with. Um, so that's just happened in the last, I'd say, year. Um, it's, it's created very different situations here in our company. I'm not saying negative, it's just, you know, a door closes and another one opens. Yeah. So what we've done is we've been very proactive because we knew this was coming and we've launched other investment vehicles that our investors now that were doing syndicated mortgages now can participate in. And we've addressed the things that they all want and love, returns, cash flow, registered fund eligible, and liquidity. So, um, so that's what's been happening on our side. <laughs> We're still busy, busy, busy as always, and nothing's yeah. changed in that regard. Yeah, so now it's going to, um, is that official that now um, it's moving from, where was it before, under fiscal? Under uh, fiscal, which is the Financial Services Commission, which now is called FISRA. And um, as of this year, we are no longer uh, participating in non-qualified syndicated mortgages meaning the construction, the development, and things like that. We've launched another product, and uh, we are working with all of our current investors in moving their funds into this vehicle, which is awesome as well. Um, it's more of a fund structure, and uh, we are working through the exempt market dealers. Uh, it's also through the Ontario Securities Commission, which is where syndicated mortgages have moved to or will be moving to in the new year, 2021. So, um, and why won't, since you're already working with the Ontario Securities Commission, I know you have um, a REIT, district REIT, and then you've, uh, you've talked to me about a, a high yielding trust you have as well, right? Is the Hyatt? The Hyatt, that's the one I was just telling you about right now, yes. Yeah, and so if you're already working under the jurisdiction of the Ontario Securities Commission, um, why are you not gonna continue with the uh, syndicates once it's under that umbrella? We certainly will. Oh, okay. You are. Yeah, it's just right now it's on hold the whole process. We are not participating in that investment product at this point in time, yeah. but we've developed others that could be equally interesting to our clients. Okay. And great. 2021. We'll see what happens. We don't know yet. Right. It's, God, uh, God, uh, God knows Carmen. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So it's been interesting and fun and, uh, I love changes and I love challenges, so I have no problem with that. And I think it was really, really needed. The industry needed to come down and, and really hone in on that side of the business. Yeah. So you have a business, you're helping other investors, uh, but you're also a very um, active investor yourself uh, just because you love uh, doing it, whether it's uh, uh, cottage, cottage country in Ontario and building those up, whether it's uh, building up uh, vacation rentals in Florida, whether it's right in your hometown of Burlington. What's the latest thing before we start talking about uh, and helping the viewers understand that you can borrow money to make money? Uh, what's the latest for Carmen? What have you been working on just as a personal uh, project in the investment space? Near Wyerton, Sable Beach, heading towards Tobamori, Lake Huron, Georgian Bay area. Um, we have uh, secured a project. It's about 80 acres. It's been run as a dirty dancing resort type thing for years, since 1937. And um, it's really cool. It's super cool. But I have a different vision for it. I want to bring a different element of excitement to that area and renovate each and every one of the cottages, bring in a restaurant owner that can, you know, create really unique food experiences for our, for the people, our guests. And I want to call it Lavender Lakes because I'm going to plant lavender everywhere. Nice. Lavender Lakes. Well, listen, I've been in many of your properties um, out inside the GTA, outside of the GTA. Like I said, I've been in your uh, beautiful uh, um, spots where people can, you know, furnish rentals on the big sticks right on the ocean in uh in florida and you know they're just beautiful let's go for a, uh, take a quick break and then when we come back let's learn how you're able to finance these um investments you're a big believer of borrowing money to be able to make money we're speaking to my good friend Car Cap uh, carmen caponero and uh, you don't want to miss this get out your paper pen we're going to go through some numbers thanks for watching 
Hey, it's Rav, welcome back to Everyday Investor. We're learning how we can make money by borrowing money. Uh, my good friend Carmen, she does it all the time. She is uh, the uh, founder of uh, ProFunds and many other companies all in and around the investing space. Carmen, thank you so much for uh, doing this with me well, here. Thank you for having me, this is awesome. Yeah, so I mean, you like I say, you're involved in multiple uh, projects in any given year. What's here we are at the end of 2020, what a year it's been. Um, what's one of the most recent uh, uh, investments you've done? And uh, most of them, you borrow the money um, and you might pay a higher interest rate to that borrow than other people than what other people would expect. But there's a reason for it, and that's what I want you to do. Um, help us understand the reasons for borrowing uh, the money. I use private money for almost every single transaction I do. Um, only for a shorter period of time. It's not a long-term play because it's expensive money and you're going to burn away all your profits if you keep it for three to five years. So for me, what I do is I go in firm, unconditional, but that's me because I'm comfortable. I know I have the money available to do that. I can get the private money and, but I also have to assess the property before I put myself into that position because once you're firm, you really can't get out. You'll lose your deposit. You could get sued. So you have to make sure when you do this, you know what you're getting into. So my example is I uh, purchased a property in Burlington, Ontario. Okay. It just happened to be across the street from my ex-husband, Kim. <laughs> and as a matter of fact, he knew the lady. So I got a, a little edge on this. He knew the lady that was selling. It was an elderly woman. She purchased another property and she needed to close really fast. So we were able to buy the property for 750000 750. Yes. So that's your purchase price. Okay. My appraisal came in at 950,000. Not yes, prior to closing. So so the appraisal came in at 950, so I was actually able to borrow against the appraised value not what I paid with okay. private money. And that's a benefit with private money because if we went to the bank, the bank would only lend us against the 750 regardless of what the appraised value really is. Yeah. So how much did you how much did you borrow? I borrowed nine hundred. Oh, you borrowed the full nine hundred. The full nine hundred was not released all on day one. Okay. okay. Was, um, I would say about we went up to ninety percent of the value. So we released. So it came in at nine fifty. We went up to I think eighty five or ninety percent of the value, and a small amount was held back until all my renovations were done. Okay. But okay. the but the point is is you borrowed nine hundred nine hundred thousand. Yes. So this is the interesting thing. In six months, I completely redid the place. Um, I have to send you some pictures. You'll see how awesome it is. Um, and I furnished it. So I, and I created a duplex out of this single family home, a very cute neighborhood in Burlington near downtown Burlington. You do this all day long. So if Rav was to, to lend you that 900,000, forget about appraisals. I'm lending you the 900,000. You paid, um, you know, grandma 750. Uh, correct? Yep. And then you have um, 150 left over? Is that what you did? Yep, that's right. Okay. Well, yep. so, uh, so I had about a hundred and, well, you know, let's say fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 went to closing costs, land transfer tax, legal fees, and that sort of okay. thing. So you took a, you took a, a, a single and you, uh, you turned it into a duplex, side by side? No, upstairs, downstairs. Upstairs, downstairs, okay. Nice. So an income, an income property. So you took the single, you turned it into an, uh, into a double. And then once you did that, what happened? Crazy. So the praise value came in at $1,350,000 on completion. Now this is not like cousin Vizzy, cousin Vinny appraisal. Like we're going to an established reputable appraisers. They come in and they say, this is what the property's worth. Absolutely. We don't deal with Cousin Vinny's because we want to make sure our clients are protected. And yeah. I also want to know the facts. I'm not going to create an image. It's, it's the reality. And this was actually for the bank. So um, the appraisal came in at 1350. Okay. So the new value, one, three, what? Five, zero. Okay. And I'm refinanced this at 80% loan to value. 80% loan to value. So what that means is uh, you only need to keep 20% of this value in the property 
and the rest you get to pull out. That's right. So 1350 is the value. And I, I received a new mortgage from a bank for 1.1 million. Yeah. You know, the 900. Yeah. Okay. And the balance is for my next project. 250. Is that right? Yeah, about that. Nine, no, 200. 200,000. Okay. So you pulled that out and you made, and this took you how long? Six months. Six months. And this is one of how many do you go, got going on at the same time usually? Well, you know what? These these things, like I said, Brad, they're not. I don't do this full time for for work. Yeah. It's passion. I love projects, so I do this on weekends and evenings. And so when they arrive and when I find them, I jump on it. And yeah. this was an opportunity. And you know what's really interesting is this came to me the day that they shut everything down at COVID. Nobody wanted it because of the fact, and that's another reason why I got it for 750. Nobody was comfortable enough. They didn't know what was gonna happen with the market. I said, you know what? Worst case scenario is I buy it and I rent it. And for 750, I know it'll definitely come back up in this area. So I went ahead and bought it. Right? So, so just to reiterate, you borrowed the 900 and from RAV because I won the lottery. So I gave you 900,000. And what did you pay me in interest um, you know, it's a because it, we don't know when it's going to be over. You said it was six months, but you you probably we talk one year terms, so to speak, right? I did a, so typically when we do private money, um, we do twelve uh, ten percent interest and a two percent lender fee. So our investors are getting anywhere between eight and ten percent on a first mortgage on a property like this. Okay, so I'm making. So you, did I make twelve on this, or did I make ten? You made twelve. I made twelve. So twelve um percent on 900 what's that a hundred a hundred and eight thousand dollars but it was six months only that i needed to lend it to you so i got paid 56 so here's here's the person here's why rav does it because somebody would say to you you know why are they lending you the money why are you borrowing the money well it's very clear why you're borrowing the money you're netting out a couple hundred thousand dollars in six months but it's also very clear why I'm lending you the money, because um, especially if we have a relationship and you're doing this, I made $56,000 in six months. Right. Is that what you're, is that what you're saying? Yeah, pretty much, yeah, that's it. And so our investors are, are looked after. I never look for a deal from our clients. I always, you put your money out, you make your money, I make my money, and then you know what? The thing is, people always, when you have that kind of a relationship, you can rely on it, it's always there. You're not taking advantage or for granted. You know what, pay that price. For me, I paid that price because I knew or my, I felt in my heart that this was going to be a good one. Yeah. And I don't mind paying someone 10% plus a 2%. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. You mean you, you, you might have been able to make 256000 or you're fine with your two hundred. You pay out the fifty six because you're able to, to close overnight. I mean, you've always taught me, Rav, don't be afraid to pay interest. Um, to be and when you're borrowing money if you know you can make a lot more money it's all about listen Carmen I, I always say this I'm not just saying this to you uh, I just think women are a lot wiser and smarter when it comes to investing so long as they're not emotional because they have the ability just to just stick with the numbers sometimes guys like me were like well it doesn't really look good but guess what I'll make it happen no, there's no make it happen with you. You're just looking at the numbers and you make a cool couple hundred thousand dollars in six months, but you borrowed the money. It's not like you had to have that in your bank. Well, think about this also though, Rav. There's equity now that I've created here. So if I have a $1.1 mil $1 million first mortgage and right now the interest rates are crazy low, like 2.1, 2 2.2%, you can get a 30-year amortization that reduces your... Um, your monthly obligations, but I'm also furnished rental these units. So I've got two two units in that yeah. house, three beds upstairs and one bed downstairs, cute little yard. And these are uh, furnished rentals and I have it set up on our onceuponastay.com uh, website. You can check it out. It's pretty cool. All our, all our properties are in there, but I'm, I'm creating cash flow for myself and I've created equity. So if I was a newer investor and I did this deal, I could take that equity I have of let's say 250 grand that's sitting in there, use that as security for another property I want to purchase. Yeah. And 
how people can start to roll it. No, absolutely. And I, and I know that's what you do. And, and uh, I love that, um, you know, or you buy for $750, we're, we're appraised at $1.350, we sell the whole thing, we pay, we, we, we pay Rav, we pay uh, Grandma, and now what are you, uh, you know, left with? You're left with a few hundred thousand dollars that you can go and do it again with. So there's many different exits in it. I just love the fact that you're not afraid to borrow $900,000 and pay 12% on that. If you kept it for a year, I'd make 100 grand. Rav's happy, you're happy, and Grandma's happy. And time is uh, run out. Thank you so much for doing this. Love you so much. I uh, really appreciate your time. And thank you guys for watching or listening via podcast. Without you, we wouldn't have a show. Uh, make sure you tune in next week. Same place, same time. Honey, I love you. I'll be home soon. Thanks for watching, everyone.